The origins of gypsies is shrouded in mysteries, misconceptions, and myths. Among other reasons, it's because they have kept no written or oral records of their own history. Plus, they are traditionally secretive people and they are wary of sharing information or forming relationships with people they consider outsider or non-gypsies. These factors make it difficult to pinpoint their history. The gypsies have a long-standing story of discrimination and ostracization that dates hundreds of years back. Many saw them and continue to do so in many cases as dirty, thieving and undesirable because of their nomadic lifestyles and their unorthodox practice in the eyes of the common people. In Finland they are referred to as Kjell, in France they are called Manus, in Portugal they are called Ciganus, in Germany and Central Europe they are referred to as Sinti. A strong 20 million Roman population is spread over 30 countries encompassing West Asia. Europe, America, and Australia. They are widespread around the world, and this begs the question Where did they come from? A multitude of different sources, including medieval texts, suggest that modern day Roman Egyptians migrated from northern and northwestern India to the European continent somewhere between the 12th and 16th centuries. This is of course a vague timeline since there is no hard evidence to suggest exactly when or why they migrated. The exact reasons for the migration and dispersal of Romanis are uncertain. Some historians suggest the Romanis left India due to caste-based oppression while some suggest they were lured with the offer of social elevation to higher caste if they participated in wars in West Asia. Arab invasion also happened around the same time and there are chances the Roman is left to escape the persecution that was followed as an aftermath of the invasion. Some also believe they were enslaved by the Arab invaders. Whatever they were doing, it was usual enough for Muslim leaders who allowed them to maintain some sort of ethnic identity. They seem to have spread in two directions, one towards Egypt and another towards the Anatolian Peninsula. A more intriguing possibility is that they were imported as metal workers. India was famous in the medieval world for its metallurgy and we know that the famous Damascus sword used by Muslim armies against crusaders was made with Indian steel technology. In the 15th century, the Roma accompanied the Turkish armies into the Balkans. Ottoman records mention gypsies as blacksmiths and craftsmen. They are also mentioned as musicians and dancers. Their attachment to the military campaign meant that they maintained their nomadic lifestyle. Over time, they would however leave Ottoman control lands and wander far and wide across Europe. Their skills of ironmongering would be used to make weapons for the Kingdom of Hungary in the 15th century during the reign of King Ulsazo. At the beginning of the 15th century, the gypsies had already arrived in the countries of the Holy Roman Empire. They then began moving west and north in this time period. The gypsies spread many myths about themselves around Europe. The greatest of this myth was outlined in a forged papal letter which stated that the gypsies had been sentenced by the Pope for their collective sins to live as nomads. Along with the tale, the letter instructed the people reading it to give the gypsies food, money and wine and exempt them from any tolls and taxes. One can only imagine the impression the gypsies must have made on the Europeans who live very sheltered lives within their tiny villages. To encounter a band of dark-skinned traveling people with black eyes and hair, wearing strange clothes and speaking gibberish would have been almost akin to an alien visitation for medieval folks. They faced persecution in medieval Europe mainly due to the color of their skin. They had dusky complexion and black hair and likened them to sin because the fundamentalist medieval Christian dogma made it very clear association between lightness and purity and darkness and sin. They were rumored to abduct children and indoctrinate them into evil gypsy life. Other variations of the story had the gypsy boiling babies in their stews and devouring them for dinner. There were laws in Europe that made Romani people cook outside and any citizen could go and tip the pot over to see if there were bits of babies in there.
The stories of gypsy stealing children seem to be perverse kind of projection on the part of Europeans. In truth, many law allow gypsy children to be forcibly sold into slavery for the equivalent of only 48 cents. Spain became the first country to issue an edict against the gypsies in 1490, prohibiting their dress, language, and customs in an effort to forcibly assimilate them. As they were a nomadic people, they traveled all around Europe, and this made many common people suspicious of their intentions. This led to a conspiracy that they were spies, and in 1497, the Holy Roman Emperor issued a decree that expelled all the gypsies from their territories for espionage. The Spanish nobility protected gypsies at first. Gypsy women were adored for their beauty and seductive charms. Gypsy men were admired as excellent judges of the quality of horses and hired by nobles to procure them for their stables. But in 1499, King Charles banned all gypsies under penalty of enslavement. In Eastern Europe, they were enslaved by the Orthodox Church in the early 16th century. Portugal banned all gypsies in 1526, and any of them born there were deported to their colonies in Africa and New World. In the coming centuries, gypsies were banned in Denmark, Netherlands, and France. Gypsy slavery was abolished in 1860, and many moved to Western Europe and Americas. The course would follow the Romani people, as later in the 19th century, Romani immigration was forbidden on a racial basis in areas outside Europe, mostly in the English-speaking world. Argentina in 1880 banned all immigration by Roma, as did the United States in 1885. In the 20th century, the gypsy faced a much more sinister foe than medieval villagers in the form of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, who decided that all gypsies must be exterminated. They were accused of many crimes that the Jews were also blamed for, including such things as child abduction and cannibalism. Intercourse and marriage between gypsy and German was forbidden. They weren't allowed to vote and later were stripped of their citizenships. During the war, besides being occasionally rounded up, they they were also often simply killed on sight. When World War II was over, an estimated 500,000 to 1.5 million gypsies had perished at the hands of the Nazis. Romani were also persecuted by the puppet regimes that cooperated with the Third Reich during the war in the Balkans, Central Europe, and Soviet Union, where most of the Romanis at that time lived. They were sent to concentration camp where an estimated quarter and a half million to 900,000 even after facing the horror of the Nazi death camps, unlike Jews, the gypsies continue to be marginalized in post-war Europe and still have to deal with discrimination, exclusion, and isolation to this day. European gypsies are often forced to live in ramshackle settlements and are denied adequate medical care and employment opportunities due to their ethnicity. Another reason why unemployment of Romani's further increase was due to their poor education and lack of skills, partially because of this, the average gypsy lifespan is 10 to 15 years shorter than the overall European average. Contribution of Romanist people in the modern society. In Spain, the sinistrism between the gypsy culture and the local one gave birth to flamenco music and dance, while in Eastern Europe, they adapted the local folk music to their own style, and thus the famous Lautari music from Romania and surrounding areas resulted, a musical genre that inspired Beethoven, Haydn, and Mozart. And it doesn't stop there. One of the most undeniable influences the gypsy people have had on Britain must be in 2008, Bohemian, a colorful fusion of gypsy ethnic and vintage clothes was the look was the look that celebrities choose to wear the gypsy way of life is an extremely colorful and exciting existence. Perhaps people should stop beating the gypsies and disturbing the travelers and learn to recognize their cultural legacy instead, openly embracing what those different cultures have to offer, no matter how diverse or foreign it may seem. 